You ask me, what is happiness? I answer, to suddenly find a living man among the dead. Hello, BookTube. I'm here today to do the uh, long-awaited review uh, for the book The Omomily Face of War by Svetlana Alekhevich. Now, this book I have been meaning to review since at least July, um, and it's easily been uh, one of the best books I've read this year. Um, I received it as an ARC from NetGalley in exchange for an honest review. And the reason why I've been stalling my re review isn't because the book was bad in any way or because there was anything wrong with the writing, but because it is um, so hard. Uh, it's such a hard story to tell, I believe. Um, and uh, the book is a series of interviews comprised with women who fought in World War II for the Russians. Um, and it's incredibly personal and it's incredibly touching uh, and it's um, incredibly raw. These women had to um, hold their stories inside um, and uh, couldn't tell anyone back home for um, 40 years and so their pain is apparent and there's, uh, I feel so inadequate trying to describe this book. Um, the only thing that I could possibly say is that you need to go ahead and read it yourself, especially if you are a writer. Um, this book will give you so much inspirational material um, and so much to draw from, or if you are trying to understand what war is like. Um, so much is um, about the personal experiences of soldiers. Um, everyone from snipers to nurses to um, uh, um, gunners to pilots, uh, um, any role that a woman had in the military, uh, there was a, an account. This book is a testament to the sacrifice and war that women have been making forever. If you look at almost any single war, women have been actual soldiers in it. Um, sometimes they've disguised themselves and sometimes not, but um, this book is just an eye-opener to the experiences that they have that are both unique to them as women and both um, in uniform with the experiences that other soldiers have. Um, History may ignore them, but their own and their own countrymen turn their backs on them. But at least in this book, we get to hear their stories, um, and it's part. And we read about too how when they returned from the war, no one wanted to hear what they had to say because they assumed that they were whores, and that was why they went to war, um, and that they were spit on in the streets. This book is so raw it burns, and it's just absolutely essential reading. And there's no way that I could possibly um, review this book except for to give you some snippets of the stories that we that we get to read. They gave me the medal, and on that same day we went on a mission. For the first time in my life, I had our woman's thing. I saw blood and howled. I'm wounded. There was a paramedic in the scouts with us, an older man. He came to me. Where are you wounded? I don't know where, but there's blood. He told me all about it, like a father. Then the battle began again. At this vest, the Germans attacked us seven or eight times a day. So that day, I also carried the wounded with their weapons. When I crawled to the last one, his arm was completely smashed, hanging by little pieces, by the sinews. He was all bloody. His arm had to be urgently amputated and bandaged. Otherwise, it would be impossible to bandage him. But I had no knife or scissors. My kit was loose on my shoulder, and the things had fallen out. What was I to do? I bit off his flesh with my teeth. I bit it off and bandaged him. I was bandaging, and the wounded man said, Make it quick, nurse. I'll go and fight some more. Then it passed, and here's how. It happened like this. We were already on the advanced. On the advance, we marched past a small settlement. I think it was in Ukraine. And there, by the road, we saw a barrack or a house. It was impossible to tell, and it was all burned down. Nothing left but blackened stones foundation. Many of the girls didn't go close to it, but it was as if something drew me there. There were human bones amongst the cinders, with scorched little stars among them. Those were our wounded or our prisoners who had been burned. After that, however many ki I killed, I felt no pity. I had seen those blackened little stars. Hand-to-hand -hand combat, what do I remember? I remember crunching. What once hand-to-hand -hand combat begins, there's immediately this crunching noise, the breaking of cartilage, of human bones, animal cries. While, when there was an attack, I'd walk along with the fighters. Well, 
just slightly behind, virtually next to them. It all happened before my eyes. Men stabbing each other, finishing each other off, breaking bones, sticking a bayonet in the mouth, in the eye, in the heart, in the stomach. And this, how to describe it? I'm too weak, too weak to describe it. In short, women don't know such men. They don't see such men at home. Neither women nor children. It's frightful to think of. Somebody betrayed us. The Germans learned the location of our partisan troop. They surrounded the forest from all sides. We were hiding in the deep woods, hiding in the swamps where the torturers did not go. A radio operator was with us. She gave birth recently. The baby was hungry, wanting the breast. But the mother is starving. She has no milk, and the baby is crying. The Germans are nearby, with dogs. If the dogs hear the baby, we're all dead. All of us. Thirty people. Do you understand? We make a decision. Nobody dares to tell her the commander's order, but the mother guesses it herself. She puts the bundle with the baby into the water and holds it there for a long time. The baby does not cry, not a sound, and we cannot lift our eyes. We cannot look at the mother or at each other. The war ended, and they all turned out to be terribly defenseless. Take my wife, an intelligent woman, but she has bad feelings about girls who were in the war. She thinks they went to the war to find husbands, that they all had love affairs there. Though in fact, since we're having a sincere conversation, they are mostly honest girls, pure. But after the war, after all the dirt and lice and death, we wanted something beautiful, bright, beautiful women. I had a friend at the front. There was a wonderful girl, as I now understand, who loved him, a nurse, but he didn't marry her. He was demobilized and found another, prettier one, and he's unhappy with his wife. Now he remembers the other one, his wartime love. She would have been a good companion to him, but after the front he left her, because for four years he had seen her only in old boots and a padded man's jacket. We wanted to forget the war, and we forgot our girls too. There's that, of course. We were all young. We wanted to live. So there's this common theme throughout the entire book and throughout all these women's stories that they had to suppress all of their memories of the war because they didn't fit into this archetype. And while their male counterparts were regarded as heroes, they were regarded as whores. And some of them had even fallen in love with their fellow soldiers, but a lot of them had, um, a lot of uh, their partners had abandoned them after the war because they didn't want to remember the war. So they went for women who had done other things and who were more feminine and they abandoned them. And I find that so unspeakably tragic that um, they, the one that um, they abandoned the women who understood them uh, because they understood them. And they um, and so we finally get to read these stories after 40 years, and, um, and it's unbelievable. I hope you understand uh, part of why I find this book so hard to describe. It is uh, totally unique, and um, it's... Yeah, it's indescribable, um, which is why it's taken me so long to review it. But just go read it. You will not regret it. Go ahead and read uh, The Omomomi Face of War by Svetlana Alekovich.